Well, it's John Gregg, uh, Mayor of Town Seabrook Island. We're uh, convened for a meeting to review and revise the town's 2020 budget. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, can you confirm that notice of this meeting was posted as required by the South Carolina Freedom of Information Act? It was. And other requirements of that act have been satisfied? It was. Thank you for that. Um, we're going to dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance, of course, and we will proceed to the subject of this meeting. I will ask that if anyone has joined this call by telephone, please mute your phone, set your phone to mute. Anything you say can be heard by other people on the call and background noises may be picked up by your phone and interfere with the ability of people to hear the proceedings. Again, please place your phone on mute. Our phone will be on, so we will hear us. I will not hear you. Our volume is turned down. And with that, I will turn to our town administrator, Joe Cronin, to uh, get us started. Joe? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> as you all know, we've been mired in a global pandemic for the last uh, almost three months now. Um, while we haven't had any direct impacts that we're aware of uh, here at the town, um, we know that there have been um, many across the county, the state, the country, and of course the world. Um, the purpose of this meeting today um, is primarily to talk about uh, the budgetary impact that we will that we'll expect to see from the coronavirus pandemic. Um, the town is on a calendar year um, budget, so we adopted the budget. Uh, last fall, and our budget year runs from January 1st through uh, December 31st. So um, we are almost halfway through our fiscal year 2020. Um, the, the good thing we have is, unlike a lot of uh, municipalities across the state, we are on a calendar year business license uh, renewal uh, process. So uh, as we've said in the past, business license makes up about half of our general fund revenue. Um, if there's one silver lining that we've had, it's the fact that we have collected the majority of our business licenses by February of this year. And so that being our, our largest revenue source, we, we expect we might see some very small impact, uh, but I think that impact will be um, fairly nominal, at least on that line item. Uh, but looking across our uh, different funds, of course, we have our general fund. We have three um, what we call restricted funds. Those are uh, the revenues from those funds are restricted by state law as to how we can use them. Um, so we have the state accommodations tax fund, the county accommodations tax fund, and the alcohol tax fund. And then this year, council created what we called four designated funds. Um, basically, what was done when the budget was adopted last fall, uh, we, we took and designated a portion uh, of our fund balance reserves for specific purposes. So the first fund was the emergency fund. Uh, those dollars are uh, basically designated or set aside for uh, emergency purposes. Uh, the road and drainage fund for road and drainage uh, improvement projects, the town facilities fund, which is if we have to, uh, if we're looking to build a new uh, structure or um, improvements to uh, the land where uh, our properties sit, uh, those could be funded out of that fund. Uh, and of course, lastly, our vehicle replacement fund. That was basically to uh, set aside and build up reserves over a period of time. Uh, so when it comes time to replace our vehicles, we don't have to go and, and account for all of that expense in one year. We could basically spread it out over a period of years. Um, 
on the first page of the uh, packet that we sent out in advance of the meeting. Uh, and I am going to try to pull that up here on the screen for anyone watching. Um, you'll see, of course, going from left to right, uh, we have the orange color is the general fund, the bluish color is the restricted, the three restricted funds, the green are the four designated funds. What I want to focus on uh, initially right now is um, looking at the yellow column, which was our original budget uh, for fiscal year 2020. These were the numbers that were adopted by town council last fall. Um, so the total combined, which is all of those funds, um, the total revenues this year were budgeted at uh, $1.53 million. That's the first line. The second line was total expenditures of $2.084 million. Um, obviously you see we were showing more going out than coming in. So it was showing a deficit of approximately $554,000. Uh, a good part of that was uh, as a result of um, some capital projects that we had included uh, in the budget, um, as well as a couple carryover items from last year. Um, in this year's budget, we had transferred um, over $2.7 million from the general fund out into those designated funds. So those all wash out. So you don't see any number there. Um, but based on the um, expenditures that were budgeted for this year, uh, we expected to have a $554,000 net change um, in our fund balance or our reserves for this year. Um, at the time the budget was adopted, um, the estimated fund balance for the end of uh, basically December 31st of 2019, we had estimated based on the 2019 budget that we would finish the year with approximately $4 million total in fund balance over all of our funds. And when you subtract the budgeted um, deficit for fiscal year 2020, we estimated our fund balance for the end of the 2020 fiscal year would be at just about three and a half million dollars. Um, the next thing to highlight is the pink column. Uh, we've gone through and we've looked at the entire budget from top to bottom and tried to revise our estimates on the revenue side. Uh, and as we'll talk about, we're projecting a, a fairly sizable uh, decrease in revenue um, mid-year for our fiscal year 2020 budget. Um, so we'll run through the, the pink column first, and then we'll talk about on the far right, how the, um, the amended, what I'm calling the recommended or amended budget uh, will compare to what was adopted uh, last fall. So based on our updated revenue projections, uh, we're expecting instead of $1.53 million, uh, we're now expecting total across all of our funds to bring in uh, approximately $1.288 million. So that's a net decrease on the right-hand side, you'll see uh, of about $242,000 or 15.8%. So across all of our funds, looking only at revenues, we're expecting to see or projecting approximately a 16% reduction across all of our revenue sources. For expenditures, um, we had budgeted uh, almost 2.1 million. Uh, what I'm gonna recommend here today is that we uh, make some mid-year budget cuts and basically reduce the, um, the budgeted expenditures this year down to about $1.54 million, which would be a net decrease of $545,350. So you'll see we're, I'm recommending that we cut more expenditures than we're expecting to see in reduced revenues. And I'll get into the reasons for that in a few minutes. What that will do is it'll allow us to preserve a little bit more of our fund balance um, the budget said we were going to use about 553, 554,000 
if you accept these recommendations as an amendment to the budget, uh, that would drop from 554 down to about 250,000. So basically preserve about 300,000 um, in our fund balances. Um, <clears throat> one thing I do wanna highlight is the, um, the cell that's highlighted in yellow. Um, when I was talking about our estimated fund balance at the end of 2019, that was based on where we started 2019 and what our budget was in 2019. Obviously we've since closed out 2019 and we have a better idea of where we finished the year, uh, 2019. We brought in more revenue than we budgeted. We spent less than we budgeted and basically uh, finished 2019 with a surplus. So based on our, um, our December 29 financial statement, um, it was showing uh, about 5.1 and a half million in fund balance, which is a pretty sizable increase over where we expected it to be when we were doing the budget. Of course, when we were talking about the budget, I said, you know, when we close out the year, we complete the audit, that number was likely going to be quite a bit higher. And we're seeing it's probably going to be somewhere in the 5.1 to 5.2 million dollars. I say probably because these numbers are not. Um, audited yet. These were the um, accountants numbers. Um, Faye, I, and the auditor uh, and the accountant have been putting information together for the auditor to complete our um, fiscal year 2019 audit. Had a little bit of a delay with everything being closed for the last couple months, but we're now um, back in that process moving forward again. Um, so if you uh, accept the recommendations that I present today, um, our fund balance would end this year with approx across all funds with approximately 4.9 million, uh, as opposed to where we originally anticipated it being, which was about three and a half million dollars. So that's just kind of looking in summary, general revenue, general expenditures uh, across all of the funds. And you can see how um, those would change from the recommended numbers as opposed to the original numbers. <coughs> The next couple pages, it's basically the same information, but I broke it out by line item. So you can see how things will be impacted across all of the different funds. Um, the numbers at the bottom um, are going to be the same as what we just looked at in the budget overview. Um, but most of these, uh, you're gonna see the revenues in one fund and not necessarily across multiple funds. Yeah. Wanted to put it in here just so you have it, but I'm really not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Um, we'll, we'll get into that when we go through uh, the individual funds. <clears throat> so with that, we're gonna take a look at our uh, fiscal year 2020 general fund. This should be the next page. Our fiscal year 2020 um, general fund revenues. This is the, uh, the original budget is gonna be the yellow line. What I'll be recommending, uh, should council elect to do a budget amendment, what I'm recommending will be the uh, pink column, the fiscal year 2020 uh, amended line. So looking across all of our revenues, um, what we had budgeted, the total amount uh, under revenues for fiscal year 2020 from the adopted budget uh, was estimated to be about $1.33 million uh, based on our current projections um, from the impact uh, of the pandemic as well as um, economic impacts that we're seeing across the state and country. Um, right now, I'm projecting that our revenues will probably drop somewhere down to about 1.2, a little over 1.2 million dollars. So that's a uh, net decrease uh, of $122,600 or 9.2%. Um, basically, where I expect to see that increase coming from, uh, I would expect to see our uh, county building permit fees uh, reduced by, we're estimating about 10%. Um, while we're still seeing a lot of new construction projects coming in, um, looking at our year to date numbers, they seem to be lagging a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit over last year. 
um, could be for any number of reasons. So we, we projected that would go down uh, approximately 10%. For permit fees, uh, just for anyone who's not aware, the town uh, has an agreement with the county and the county uh, reviews and issues building permits and they conduct all inspections on the town's behalf. Uh, they collect the permit fees and in return for that service, they keep 90%, 10% comes to the town. So when you see um, that line item, that's the 10% that we collect uh, from the county for the permits that they issue uh, on our behalf. Um, you'll see right now, I'm not projecting a decrease in business license revenues. Uh, we had budgeted this year at 375,000. Uh, as I've said, we collected most of that um, by February. Um, we're right now through uh, the end of May, we're at about $360,000. I, I think we'll, we'll get to and most likely exceed 375 because most of the contractors, they come in and they update their license every time they have a job. So there's still gonna be some revenue coming in uh, over the next six months. Um, probably not to the extent that we saw it last year, um, but I, I do expect that we'll hit our $375,000 um, estimate for this year's budget out of business license. Uh, if we were like a lot of other cities across the state who are on a uh, April or May renewal period, I would certainly not be making that recommendation right now. We know what the impact has been um, to the business community from the shutdown over the last two months. Um, I will say, looking ahead, we will feel the impact of this on business license in 2021, because most of our businesses are going to pay what they, based on what they generated the previous year. Uh, if a lot of those businesses were closed for a period of months, um, or we're seeing reductions in their sales once they open back up, we expect to see that reflected in our 2021 uh, budget. So when we look at reducing uh, our deficit this year, the intent for that is to try to preserve more of that fund balance because I think next year we're going to see a bigger impact than we will this year. Um, as far as business license fees from MASC, that's the Municipal Association, uh, they collect a lot of fees on our behalf. It's primarily the uh, insurance um, brokers, insurance providers, and a few others. Um, this is really not so much a result of um, the pandemic. Uh, we're showing a $45,000 reduction or 16.4%. The reason for that is they've, they've basically, and, and you see this in the 2019 numbers as well. In 2019, we budgeted 265. We only brought in about 233. They've seen some pretty significant reductions on the brokers. Um, license tax collections. Um, so we're projecting that that's going to go down, not so much as a result of the pandemic. There might be some impact from the pandemic, but um, I think that's really more of a reflection of reduced um, revenue from other sources. Um, so again, that's about a $45,000 reduction. Um, not showing any changes in um, just to backtrack a little bit, not showing any changes in aid to subdivisions. Um, the state uh, legislature has basically done a continuing resolution uh, to continue funding levels for um, their fiscal year 2020-2021, which starts July 1st. Um, I think they are going to come back and adopt a new budget for their fiscal year. Um, under state law, they can reduce it. I believe it's by 5%. Um, so there's a, a chance this number could go down a little bit, um, but right now we've anticipated that it would stay uh, at the current year's budget based on the continuing resolution that's been adopted by the legislature. Um, not showing any changes in contractual reimbursements. That was a new item that we had this year. Uh, if you recall, we had the um, mediation agreement with the developer of the senior facility uh, whereby um, the town would be conducting um, some additional studies on the roadway, um, purchasing some equipment for monitoring their compliance with the terms of that agreement. Uh, this was basically to reflect what they would be submitting to us as a reimbursement 
for those expenses. So um, at this time, not planning any change to that. Um, haven't gotten an update on the status of that project in uh, the last several months. So, but this is going to be tied to the expenditure. So if the expenditures go down, the um, the revenue number will go down. If the expenditures go up, the revenue number will go up. It's going to cancel out at the end of the day. Um, not showing a reduction in court fines, convenience fees. Um, we are showing a reduction in facility rentals. That's basically if somebody um, reserves town hall, uh, you know, council chambers, conference room, or the exterior for meetings, those type things. Um, obviously, we're not allowing anybody to have meetings here currently. Um, we did have one, I believe, um, so far this year. Um, so we've it's only a hundred dollars in there, so it's not a big um, line item. Um, <clears throat> I did put in a um, small reduction for our franchise fees revenues. That's um, AT and T for their uh, UVerse, uh, Berkeley Electric, and Comcast. I think that's probably not so much um, a a reduction in people canceling those services. Um, what MASC has recommended is that, you know, cities will likely collect these funds, but if people are having to choose between paying their mortgage, paying their rent or whatever, they may be getting behind. Um, and you'll see Berkeley and, and even our own utility commission um, had a period of time where they weren't doing any cutoffs and collecting late fees and those type things. So they probably will over time collect all those funds, but there might be a delay. So I think it would be good just to be a little conservative and, and put a small reduction in for those, knowing that, that they may see some reduction and there might be some delay uh, in people paying those bills. So I, I put in 3% uh, for each of those three franchise fees. Um, Getting down to interest on the investment pool, um, we had budgeted this year 60,000. Uh, you'll see last year we had budgeted 49,000, actually brought in over 107,000. Um, that was really a combination of two things. One is our sizable fund balance. When you have more money in the bank, you generate more interest off of it. But two, we were starting to see the interest rates go up and the returns uh, higher than they had been in the past. Um, we know rates have gone basically back down to nothing again, um, but we do still have a lot of money sitting in fund balance. So um, I've recommended that we uh, reduce what we had budgeted at 60,000, um, which again was still almost half of what we actually collected last year. I've recommended that we drop that down to 50,000, just be a little bit more uh, conservative with that. Um, local option sales tax. Um, Obviously, when businesses are closed, people aren't buying things at brick and mortar stores. Um, so there's going to be an impact to local option sales tax collections for the county. Um, <clears throat> this one's, I would say, kind of a moving target. I mean, things are starting to open back up, but I know just from my own anecdotal observations, when I go to a restaurant or I go to a store or something, Yes, there's people there, but there's not as many people there as there were a few months ago. Um, and then also this, this county depends a lot on tourism. And we know there were a lot of people that came here Memorial Day weekend, but we don't know if people are gonna continue to come here from you know, the Northeast or from the West or from Europe or other places um, if they can't fly or if they don't feel comfortable flying. So I expect there's probably going to be a fairly sizable impact on local option sales tax revenue. Uh, our cut this year in the, in the budget, we estimated 250,000. Last year, we actually collected about 280,000. Um, I recommended that we drop our budget amount from 250 down to 200, uh, which would be a 20% uh, reduction. Um, planning and zoning fees, um, I've recommended a 20% reduction. Uh, again, we're still seeing a lot of the, um, the new construction coming in. In fact, we're actually higher than we were uh, this time last year with more uh, we understand in the pipeline. Um, but we are seeing some of the smaller projects, not seeing as many of those as we have in years past. 
Um, so I, I think we'll expect to see some reduction in our planning and zoning fees. Um, and then the last one is state A tax. I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail when we get to the A tax fund. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we expect the biggest impact to be on accommodations tax, um, which is generated when people come and they stay in a rental unit. Uh, there's a tax that's collected, part of it goes to the um, state, part of it goes to the county, and then the town gets part of that back from the state and county. Um, I expect to see a very sizable reduction in a tax this year. Um, under state law, the first 25,000 that we collect has to go into our general fund and then 5% of the balance. So we're only showing about a 10% reduction on the general fund side, because by law that 25,000 has to go in there regardless of what we collect. But you will see a bigger impact when we get to the um, state a tax fund. <coughs> Um, looking at some of our expenditures, um, and again, just to reiterate, when we look at all those, a net expected reduction is about $122,000, $123,000. <clears throat> if, we, if we didn't make any changes on the expenditure side, and we didn't have any additional revenue identified, um, we had originally shown a total deficit in our general fund this year of $60,000. Um, if we, if we only, if we changed our revenue side, but didn't change our expenditures, then our deficit would be expected to go from 60,000 in the budget. We would have to add an additional 122,000 on top of that. So our deficit would become, uh, about 180, a little over $180,000, um, <clears throat> which is certainly an option. Council does not have to um, cut any expenditures. Uh, as I said, we have a, a fairly sizable fund balance. So if you wanted to leave our expenditures where they were, uh, we can, and I'd still be comfortable that we have uh, enough sitting in the fund balance in order to do that. Um, like I said, my, my recommendation, I think we probably want to look at preserving that fund balance. So what I'm, what I'm going to present to you today is basically bringing the budget back in balance. Um, so not only cutting that 122,000 that we expect to get in lost revenue, but also cutting that 60,000 that we were budgeting to come out of the fund balance um, this year. In addition, because of the impact of some revenues that we'll see on the, uh, the ATAC side, we're gonna have to bring in primarily uh, additional expenses related to beach patrol. So we're gonna have to raise that and then further reduce some additional line items. So basically what I've put together here uh, is an updated recommendation um, that that if we are going to seek to bring the um, general fund in balance with revenues and expenditures uh, in balance, um, that we would have to bring our expenditures down by $182,600. So I'm just gonna hit these real quick and then I'll go into some of the details. Uh, the ones that would change um, salaries and gross wages would go down uh, two and a half percent. Um, and then other payroll items, uh, FICA, which is Social Security and Medicare, medical insurance, retirement would also go down uh, between two and a half and six and a half percent. Capital expenditures have recommended reducing that by 90 percent. That's where a lot of the big high dollar items are, uh, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, community promotions, that was a grant program that was expected to be set up in this year's budget. Uh, recommendation was to not do that this year. Uh, our contingency would go down uh, approximately 13%. Contingency is money we set aside just for unexpected things that may come up uh, over the course of the year. Uh, contracted services landscaping um, would go down 18,000 or 12.4%. Uh, emergency communications, $1,200 or 11.2%. Emergency preparedness would go down 4,000 or 10.8%. Uh, furniture and equipment, 6,200 or about 54%. Uh, 
um, the um, town hall maintenance, 52,500 or 89, almost 90%. Memberships, dues and subscriptions would go down 2,500 or 12.6%. Office materials and supplies reduced 30,000 or about 30%. The pre-employment expenses would go down uh, 75%, $1,500. Uh, professional services for our auditor would go down 5,000 or 25%. Special events would be reduced by 10% or $1,000. Travel and training would go down by uh, 5,000, 43.5%. Uh, uniforms would go down by 100 or 5.7%. You'll notice there's a couple items where the um, recommended uh, amended budget will see uh, an increase. Um, those are contracted services beach patrol, an increase of, on the general fund side, of $24,000 or 68, over 68%. Um, maintenance of Seabrook Island Road increased 16.7% for $5,000. And um, printing and scanning services of $2,500. <clears throat> so if we were to adopt all of those changes, then our revenues and expenditures would be in balance. And basically at the end of this year, based on the, um, on the next page, based on uh, where we were at the end of 2019, our fund balance, our, our unreserved fund balance uh, in the general fund would be estimated at about $2.2 million. So like I said, if you wanna keep the expenditures we have, um, we expect there's probably going to be um, about $2.2 million sitting there. So, I mean, it's not going to be the end of the world if we want to keep some of these items in, um, but we will be going into that fund balance to um, pick up some of those costs. <clears throat> now on the general fund, I'm just going to run through and, and highlight um, some of the actual specific line items um, that I've recommended to how to get to those, um, how to get to those changes. Uh, I'm not going to read all these. I'm, I'm just going to kind of hit some of the highlights. Um, basically, the um, the first one is line item 5,005. It's salaries, gross wages, um, and just um, just so you kind of know what you're looking at. Um, when you see something that's highlighted in red, that means that I've recommended reducing um, that expenditure. If you see something that's highlighted in green, that's something that I've recommended either increasing or adding that wasn't part of the original budget. So on all of the personnel related items, um, <clears throat> primarily gonna be driven by um, two things. Um, one, we know one of our employees is retiring at the end of this year. We had budgeted to bring her replacement in in September. Um, I've recommended that we delay that a little bit. We still want to have enough overlap to get the new person trained, um, given the importance of that position. Um, but I've recommended that we hire that a little bit later. So instead of having three to four months, it might be two to three months. So that would result on a, a savings for that one. The other one we had budgeted are admin assistant position to begin in January. Uh, obviously that position wasn't filled until uh, middle of March. So we could, in the budget, reduce that a little bit uh, as well, um, which would result in a net reduction. Um, we did, uh, this was something that I've recommended that the mayor uh, approved uh, a couple months ago. Um, while the admin position was filled, and mind you, this was during um, our uh, business license renewal period, all of that work fell on our other employees. And so I'd ask the mayor if we could do a one-time bonus just in recognition of the additional time and effort that they had put in. Uh, the mayor did sign off on that. So when you see that additional item, that's what that was. It was just a, a way of thanking and recognizing them for uh, the additional time and work that they put in uh, just to keep us going while we were short staffed. Um, <clears throat> So when we put those changes in, it would drop the salary uh, items um, down a little bit to 361,000. Um, when you reduce salaries, you're also gonna reduce payroll taxes. So FICA is also going down. Um, 
by delaying the hiring of the new person uh, in March, and then also delaying our uh, replacement person to probably October, November. Um, that's going to reduce the number of months that we're paying medical insurance for those people. So we uh, reduce that a little bit as well. So, so yes. This suggestion to change the timing for the new hire of the court treasurer. The end of the year is when we have holidays, which means time off. Mm -hmm. And that suggests to me a concern about changing the timing. You're, you're a change of one month, but with the holidays falling in November and December, um, we're losing time for what I thought was the anticipated overlap to get the new hire uh, familiar with the job. Yeah, you, you would be losing um, a month off of that. Um, of course, we closed for a couple days in November, a few days in December. Um, we have Veterans Day, um, two days at Thanksgiving, three days at Christmas. So and basically a little over a week of lost time. Um, I felt that having a three month overlap would probably still be sufficient. Whereas before we were showing a four month overlap. Um, I came here, I had about a four week overlap. So it's still about, uh, and I also got here in November. So we had the same thing with holidays and everything. Um, so I, I, I understand that, um, but I, I, I still think three months is a, in my opinion, enough time to um, learn the position. Um, we'll also have the benefit this year, you know, we'll be going through and um, preparing and adopting the budget during that time. Um, we'll be closing out our uh, 2020 books during that time um, or getting ready to close the books out. So a lot of the things that they're gonna have to know how to do, they're gonna be coming in at a perfect time to learn and understand how to do that. I mean, we can certainly add it back in if, if you think it's if you think it's that important. But I, I felt like having three months, uh, even knowing that we would lose some days with the holidays, should should still be enough uh, to train well, that person. I don't want to second guess your recommendation. I, you know, I guess it also weighs on me that our timing for the administrative assistant didn't turn out according to our expectation. And in this instance, loss of another month or more in getting that new person in would have a very bad impact on their ability to get used to the mm -hmm. position. So it, it then becomes much more important that we adhere to the plan employment of the new person. I agree. And um, I would say we will start advertising and recruiting for that position uh, on an earlier time frame than we did the last one. Uh, of course, the last one, we did have a part-time person in that position um, who left on a fairly quick turnaround. Uh, they were offered another um, position. So with that one, you know, we thought there was a little bit more time. Um, but we ended up getting a, a resignation um, and a fairly quick turnaround, which left that position vacant. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would expect probably at least three months before the hire. So probably in the next 30 to 45 days, we'll be planning to move forward with um, advertising and recruiting for that, for that replacement person. I think the solution is we just don't let that particular person retire. Just like no retirements. Budget amendment, no retirement. I can see the headline now. <laughs> see what I like. brings back conscription. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure how that individual would feel about that. But, um, I did threaten once before to um, hold her by the ankle as she was trying to walk out the door. Um, but uh, no, that I mean that's um, it, it's a good point. Um, 
it's something we don't want to get into a position where, um, you know, you could have it where you offer it to somebody, they say they're coming and then change their mind and then you have to go back and, you know, start over or go back and, you know, re-interview or something. So given the importance of that position, it's one that, that um, I mean, all of our, with as small as we are, all of our positions are important, but, but that one in particular, I would say is, is probably one of the most important. So uh, we're going to have to be, um, uh, we want to leave enough time to make sure we fill it, number one, but also to make sure that we fill it with the right person too. Um, jumping down to uh, state retirement, um, that's actually being driven by two things. One is if we're um, adjusting the salary information, but two, um, we did receive word from PIBA, which is the state agency that's over the state retirement system. Uh, they had announced a one percentage point increase that would have been effective uh, July 1st of this year that we had budgeted for in this year's budget. Uh, they since came out a little while back saying that they were not going to uh, increase the employer rate. So we had blended it. Um, so 15 and a half percent um, for our first six months, 16 and a half for our next six months. Um, and we've now taken that out and just reduced the amount um, by one, one percentage point. Um, so that would save a little bit. On um, the Next page, going down to capital expenditures. This is kind of where I would say we're getting into the meat. These are the uh, high dollar items. Um, when I look at them, are they absolutely necessary? No. Um, are they good to have? Do they serve a purpose? Yes, but if they're not necessary to me, uh, my recommendation is we delay those projects to some point uh, in the future. Uh, the first one we had budgeted to um, replace um, the signage, uh, primarily the gateway sign uh, for the traffic circle, the sign at town hall, uh, maybe some of the other ones that need to be replaced uh, along the right of way. Put in 50,000 for that. Uh, I would recommend that we take that out of this year's budget. Um, for council upgrades, we had put in 40,000. Um, what we were looking at doing um, was to uh, basically do a new desk for council, um, having a new podium, um, and also doing some technology upgrades. Um, we wanted to get um, either some TV or drop down uh, screens, monitors, so uh, when we have items, we can put them up on the screen so people sitting in the audience when we are actually allowed to have an audience again, can see what's being presented to council and have a better understanding of what you're looking at. Um, and we had also considered even knowing that I'm sitting here with a Surface tablet sitting on top of Faye's mailbox propped up by two Kit Kats. Uh, <laughs> we were also gonna look at, could we get in some uh, a camera system so we can actually um, have the technology in place, uh, something a little more sophisticated than what we're doing right now um, to uh, broadcast our council meetings. So um, I would recommend that we just delay that 40,000 for that expenditure to um, either next year or a future budget year. Um, so those two alone would cut um, 90,000 uh, out of the, um, the general fund budget. Sure, do you have any feel at all for what the spend would be just for the video upgrades without the new dais and the podium? Um, I, I hadn't gotten far enough. We were looking at a couple different options and I had, I had talked with um, the contractor who had done the cabinet work and some other stuff here uh, at town hall. And a lot of that we'd have to bring in like an audio video company to do that work. And right after that discussion, I think it was right around the time everything was shutting down. And I was like, this is probably not gonna be good for a revenue standpoint. So I have not had any additional um, discussions with um, any other contractors to get an estimate um, for that. Obviously there's gonna have to be some wiring, some upgrades, um, 
depending on what we do and how we do it, it may require some additional modifications in here. Um, if it's just the camera system, probably not that much, maybe a few thousand dollars. Um, if we wanted to do the other AV upgrades, it's, it's gonna be a bit more than that. But uh, I would guess, if I had to guess, somewhere in the five to $10,000 range to do all that. Now, I'm not sure about screens in here. If we had an audience, they can see us. If we don't have an audience, we don't use the screens. I guess. Right. I mean, maybe we could use a screen. I haven't felt the need. Mm -hmm. When we've had people come in and do their presentations, then we've used the uh, projector screen. That is a you know something that people would have in their homes, kind of a thing. Yeah. And uh, I don't. It's good enough for the few times that that occurs. For the camera, seems to me like that might be something worth spending a few thousand dollars on to get over this hurdle. Or new Kit Kats. <laughs> yeah, or new Kit Kats. Either. Yeah. Well, we have to replace the Kit Kats after every meeting, I will say. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not going to be just a camera, stick it up and it's done. I mean, there's wiring and installation. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you'd have to be able to control it. Are we going to have multiple cameras, single camera? So I mean, it's it's a little more complicated than that. But I mean, if if that's a priority, um, you know, we we can certainly get some estimates on that. Just for the time being, I've recommended that we pull all of it out. Um, but if if you think that's a priority, we can always add it back in. Um, next item uh, was a new one this year: the community promotions grant. Uh, council had set aside $5,000 for basically a small grant type program uh, for community organizations. Given where we are in the year now, almost halfway through, um, the uh, recommendation was made that we scrap that for this year and do that uh, in next year's budget if we have the funding uh, in order to do it. Uh, contingency, again, that's the um, line item that we set aside basically just for um, uh, unexpected uh, expenses. So, you know, if you decided you wanted to put the camera um, system back in or something, you know, we can put a, a portion of that back into capital expenditures and, you know, reduce that contingency a little bit and not have any impact uh, on the bottom line. But uh, we know over the course of the year, there's other things that come up. So we uh, typically will try to keep some contingency set aside uh, for those items. Um, so we have you know, some funding in place in which to do it. Uh, but we did recommend reducing that from where it was uh, in the adopted budget. Uh, as I mentioned um, a little while ago, the um, what we're expecting to be significant reductions in state and county accommodations tax um, means that we're going to have to shift, uh, assuming we want to keep beach patrol at, on the same schedule, same level of service that we have under our, our existing contract, through the end of September, um, we're gonna have to find another way to pick up those costs. Um, so what I've recommended doing, our, our revised contract price is 130, about $134,000 for this year. Uh, there's also an add-on for the garbage service, which we account for in another line item. Uh, but the actual beach patrol contract is about 134,000. Um, the revised recommendation is that 59,000 would come out of the general fund, um, 60,000 from state ATAX, 15,000 from county ATAX. The, the biggest impacts on the county ATAX, um, having to shift the majority of that over from county ATAX fund to general fund. So that's- The county uh, ATAX fund is what's in the fund balance yes. from 2019. Yes. It's not- County ATAX there will be revenue because county ATAX revenue is zero this year. That's right. There will be no um, county ATAX money coming in. So the money that you see is spending down what we still had um, from previous years carried over into our um, fund balance. Um, otherwise, that would be 15 additional thousand we would have to move over, um, plus possibly some state ATAX as well. <coughs> Um, for landscaping services, um, 
you'll see on the on the red line, um, we had anticipated going out for a, a new landscaping contract um, this year, and we had budgeted an increase in anticipation that that there would likely be an increase this year. Um, I, I had spoken with our landscape contractor a while back, and um, I, I know there had been some uh, issues in the past with the pricing on the contract, and um, the owner of that company had expressed that um, after some changes were made over the last couple of years, you know, they were in a position where it was still workable for them, and you know, they were okay. Um, so my recommendation would be that we delay going out for the new um, request for proposals or bids for that contract uh, into 2021 and basically scale back what we anticipated some of that increase would be, uh, which is a, a net reduction of uh, 18,000 or 15%. <clears throat> On the... Oops. On the next page under our contracted services other line item, um, you'll see the uh, green one for Shred 360. Um, they, when we had originally uh, requested dates for our two community shredding days for this year, um, they've gone up on the pricing fairly significantly over the last, where we've been really the last 10 years. Um, went to uh, I think we were spending about $300 per event to now 200 per hour. Um, so if we wanted to uh, maintain the same number of hours, it would increase uh, basically by double um, for our three hour events. Um, I've, I've, originally we had that set in at a lower amount. I've recommended that we put it in. Um, we did have to postpone our April event uh, have been in communication with them. We are trying to schedule a uh, makeup day, uh, hopefully for July if we can. Um, but if we want to keep the two events at the same number of hours, uh, we'd want to increase that line item a little bit um, in order to uh, to do that. Otherwise, we'd have to um, either go back to one event or to do two uh, two hour events, uh, which would still be putting it a little bit over where we were before. My recommendation is just keep it at two events, three hours each. Um, it's not a huge sum of money, it's a few hundred extra dollars, but it is an increase um, over where we were in the adopted budget. <clears throat> um, under 6220, which is emergency preparedness, um, we had put in Atlantic Business Continuity Services, Scott Cave, um, his company, who's been our um, contracted provider for emergency uh, disaster preparedness, emergency management services. Um, Scott has since sold his company. Um, he's still with the company, um, but it's now under a different company. There's been some ongoing conversations about a new contract with that company. Um, we did have this at 17,500. Uh, I've plugged in an additional 2,500, um, an expectation that that contract amount may go up a little bit from what we had anticipated. Um, we don't know the exact amount yet of where that's gonna be, but I, I do think it would be beneficial to uh, increase that a little bit over where it had been. Um, <clears throat> Disaster Awareness Day, we had put in 5,000 um, for expenses related to that event. Um, we and the town of Kiowa had agreed to just go ahead and cancel that event so we can just zero out um, that 5,000. Uh, we had also put in 2,500 just for miscellaneous things that may come up uh, over the course of the year. Um, one of the ones we had just recently talked about that we didn't anticipate, didn't budget for uh, this year was, well, what if we have something going on during the pandemic and we have an evacuation, we're bringing everybody back and we have to say, convene our disaster recovery council. You know, we have certain supplies, but we don't have masks and, and other things. So, you know, miscellaneous, just things you may not expect over the course of the year. Um, so we've recommended putting that at 1,000, uh, reducing it from 2,500, but still keeping some uh, miscellaneous. Um, <clears throat> any questions about emergency preparedness? All right, jumping down to furniture and equipment. 
Um, we did include um, some money uh, this year for, um, if you recall, we did some painting last year. We wanted to kind of upgrade and modernize town hall. We had put in a little bit of money for uh, some art and photography, not necessary. I'd recommend we just push that off to a later date, which would cut $2,200. And on the next page, we had budgeted 5,000 for new drapes, window coverings, window dressings, those type things. Um, my recommendation is we reduce that from 5,000 to 1,000. Let's just put some new blinds, uh, Venetian type blinds like we have elsewhere in the building uh, in this room. We should be able to do that for under a thousand dollars, and uh, I don't think you can do it for under a thousand. I measured and priced them out on blinds.com, and I can do them for under a thousand dollars. I mean, when I mean, are they just the plastic? Or are they super skinny? Or are they wider? I mean, no, they're the faux, similar to what we have elsewhere, the faux wood, um, faux wood blinds. I think they're two inch. Um, Bally, I think, was the manufacturer. I would be really surprised. <laughs> well, they're pretty standard windows. Yeah, so that's that's where we're. Mm -hmm. They're not custom. Yeah, yeah. So I'm confident we can do it for a thousand or less. That's good because I only want to do blinds anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we're yeah. happy. We're yes. happy. <laughs> I mean, it might be me with a um, a drill or something, but we can get them in for uh, for under under a thousand dollars and I mean, here in the windows right? okay. yeah <laughs> otherwise i'm just going to go to walmart and get some shades <laughs> um for jumping down to maintenance 5301 town hall maintenance um, we had budgeted this year to replace the carpet in town hall uh, at an estimated cost of twenty thousand the one we all liked <laughs> came in a little bit more than 20,000. Um, I'm going to recommend that we just clean the carpet that we have and let's let it go for another year um, and then cut out that um, 20,000. Um, but I did recommend increasing the miscellaneous repairs and maintenance um, to town hall um, from 2,500 to 5,000. There's going to be a cost for doing some of this cleaning. Um, also recommended that we hold off on the exterior painting. Um, we have signed a contract with a, um, uh, a power washing and soft cleaning contractor that will be coming in uh, this Saturday and Sunday to do the exterior of the building. Um, so we wouldn't paint this year, but the building will look a heck of a lot better than it does. So Joe, right I have now. a question on that painting. Yes. I mean, the painting was the actual building, mm -hmm. but what about all this metal work and stuff that's a rusted mess? Does another year like add damage to that? Do we at least uh, get the railings painted? I, I had actually gotten um, another quote um, separate from the, the cleaning mm -hmm. to do some miscellaneous repair and touch-up type work. Um, not that expensive. That's one of the reasons why I've recommended that we increase the miscellaneous repairs mm -hmm. uh, and maintenance. Um, even if we're just touching up, doing some minor repairs, spot painting, resealing, whatever, um, you know, I think that can at least get us an extra year or two. Um, you know, like when you come in, the one that always bothers me is the rust on those speakers. Uh, under the um, the drive-through area in front of town hall, so you know we can get those cleaned up, but then probably repainted too. Yeah, at least that main railing. Going yeah. Down is a mess. Two on each side of the stair. Yeah. I I would support at least doing that because I think that it's kind of preventative for the rest. Mm -hmm. no Certainly. Yeah, that that was really the 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 reason for increasing the maintenance okay. is you know for cleaning for spot repairs, minor type stuff but not doing the entire building, right. not replacing all the carpet. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say is um, the last time we had our um, roof inspected, they said we probably had two to three years. Um, so that's another big one that's gonna be in the pipeline too. So uh, I would say we don't wanna push this off forever uh, because there's gonna be some other big expenditures in the pipeline. Uh, just, I mean, ordinary maintenance type stuff yeah. that we're going to have to do. So, um, 
But, yeah, so that would um, reduce significantly the, um, the maintenance line items. Um, on the next page under membership dues and subscriptions, um, we had budgeted that the county has an online permitting system and we have had some uh, discussions with them about the possibility of the town um, tying into that system. Um, basically, it would be adding us as a client. So when something came in, it would be routed to us for zoning review, but then back to them for the permitting. Um, and, you know, would set up, um, you know, they could collect fees and those type things and remit them back to us. Um, it's not a, a huge expense, um, $2,500, give or take. Um, <clears throat> that was really more of a reflection of, I just don't know that we're going to have the resources to commit to doing all that. Right now. Um, knowing we're replacing a key member of our staff and everything else going on with the pandemic and whatnot. Um, I, I just don't know that we're going to be able to, to have the resources to make that happen this year. Uh, I would just recommend that we remove it from the budget and maybe revisit it uh, next year. Uh, under materials and supplies, we had put in for some um, promotional items. Um, a lot of times we get people coming in like, hey, do you have just like little tchotchke type things, you know, things we can give out at Disaster Awareness Day and whatnot. Um, not having Disaster Awareness Day and knowing this is not an essential line item in the budget, uh, I've recommended that we uh, just strike it from the budget, uh, $1,500. Uh, we'd also put in $2,500 to... Um, upgrade some of our old Christmas decorations. I didn't zero it out because we did already buy a new tree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that was going to be like days, <laughs> like going away. I mean, you should say yeah. new decorations. Um, so John wants 4th of July decorations. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll still do, uh, we'll still do a little bit, but we're not, and this was something we were going to do over several years anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll still do a little bit, but not 2,500 dollars worth. Um, <clears throat> under pre-employment expense, um, 5020, we had budgeted 2000. Um, I will say when we filled the admin assistant position, our pre-employment expense really wasn't much of anything. Um, we had uh, tried um, Indeed, um, which is a, a web-based program and app. And um, they had a paid version or a free version. I said, well, let's put out the free version. And, you know, if we don't get enough responses, we'll, you know, do a sponsor of that or something. And we had like almost 300 applicants. So we really didn't incur uh, very many expenses for that. Um, so I recommended we cut that down to 500. Uh, I'd, I'd still want to keep something in there, particularly for the new position we'll be hiring. We may want to do a little bit of targeted marketing um, for that. Um, so I, I think we should be able to do that for around $500. And Joe, you don't see a need to engage a placement service stroke recruiter to help us find the individual we need? I, I don't think so. Um, I've actually kept a couple of the admin assistant applications that came in um, who I think may be good candidates when we open up that position. Um, so I, you know, I plan to reach out to them to see if they're still interested. Um, but uh, um, I, I don't think so. Um, if we do, I'd probably say we just tap into the contingency if we decided we needed that, but I, I don't anticipate that we will. Our experience was it's a percentage based on salary is how they get paid. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking at potentially thousands in fee. Potentially. I don't think we'll need it, but, but potentially. Uh, under 5366 printing and scanning. Um, this was actually just an oversight when we did the budget. We didn't have a line in there for um, printing of our business license renewal form. So I've recommended that we stick it in so we don't forget about it again next year. Uh, that was about $2,500. Uh, 
uh, on the next page um, under professional services auditor. Um, when we completed the budget, we were in the process of going through the RFP to select a new auditor. We anticipated the cost of the audit would go up. So we budgeted 20,000. Um, our actual cost under our contract, which was signed after this fiscal year began, um, was 15,000. So we can reduce that by $5,000. Special events, we had uh, miscellaneous events. We put in 2,000. That's just, you know, council wants to have a special uh, meeting, special event or something. And, um, you know, there's some cost or something. Um, basically just having it in as a, as a placeholder if anything does come up. Uh, we had budgeted 2,000. I just recommend you to drop that down to uh, 1,000. I think when we did the swearing in last year, we did that out of the miscellaneous events. Um, after the election last year, that's just the type of thing that you know you might see come out of that. Last year we had the uh, farewell and welcome dinner. We did. Yes. Which was another swanky affair at the club. <clears throat> um, under. Travel and training, I've recommended really by and large across the board reductions and travel and training expenses. Um, I didn't zero them out entirely because there's certain things like there's certain things that I have to maintain like continuing education uh, credits for um, planning and zoning officials as do our um, board and commission members. Um, but I've recommended reducing them pretty much across the board more so as a reflection that you know, conferences are being canceled. People aren't really traveling right now, um, but there may still be online courses and those type things. So I didn't want to zero it out um, entirely, but we have reduced it um, fairly significantly. Um, we had also included money in the budget this year for council members to attend the MASC annual conference, which was to be held in downtown Charleston conveniently. Um, We've now gotten word that's been canceled as well. They're going to do some sort of uh, online abbreviated version. Um, still waiting on details for that, but um, uh, obviously this is one that we we could easily cut across the board. <clears throat> um, under uniforms, I had added because we have one additional um, code enforcement officer, um, three additional um, shirts uh, for the new code enforcement officer, um, and then. We had council members at four per person. So if we can do that like everybody else, do three per person, uh, which reduced that um, by a little bit as well. And <laughs> obviously if you don't want them, we can take them out, but that's, we have those in the budget this year, just recommended reducing that a little bit. So if we were to do all of those cuts um, combined with the, reduce revenue, then we would be in balance, not using any money uh, out of our general fund reserves. Um, we don't necessarily have to debate, discuss any of these or anything. Um, if we are going to do an amendment, uh, I know the mayor mentioned this at the last council meeting, if you amend the budget, you have to do it by ordinance. So we would have to have a, an updated uh, budget amendment ordinance, um, which would have to go through two readings and a public hearing, just like the regular. Um, budget. So my recommendation is that we do that. Obviously, these numbers could all be changed based on um, uh, what council wants to do. But um, like I said, my recommendation was to try to get the general fund in balance. And, and that's what these recommendations will do. Uh, obviously, they can be tweaked however you see fit. Before I go into the restricted funds, any questions or comments on general fund? All right, hearing none, we will jump down to our restricted funds. As I said before, these are, uh, there's external restrictions in our case by state statute as to how we can um, spend these funds. They have to be accounted for separately and whatnot. So uh, we have three, we have state A tax, which is accommodations tax. That's the lodging tax. 
Um, there's the county A tax, and then there's the alcohol tax. Um, <clears throat> when the money comes in from state A tax, um, we have budgeted this year uh, 175,000 total across the board uh, into state A tax. Uh, I've dropped that down to 105,000. Um, we know for a period of six weeks, the rental properties here on the island were prohibited from uh, check-ins and new reservations um, for short-term rental stays. Um, that included Easter, that included spring break. So we expect there's going to be some reduction from that. Um, coupled with, are people still going to be traveling this summer? Um, some will be, yes, but will it be as much as we've seen last year, the last couple of years? We don't really know at this point. Is there going to be a second wave of the pandemic? If you're looking at the data coming out of DHEC, it looks like we might already be having a second wave of the pandemic. We've, our last, uh, I think our last, our five highest days of new cases have been the last five days. So. Um, we don't know what's going to happen and how that's going to impact our revenues. Um, for the time being, I have recommended that we reduce the total A tax from 75 down to 105. Um, under state law, the first 25,000 has to go to our general fund, and then there's a formula. So 5% of the balance has to go to um, the general fund. 30% of the balance will go to um, uh, tourism promotion, which we just give that to the uh, Charleston County, Charleston Regional Convention and Visitors Bureau for their regional marketing. And then the 65% is for what we call tourism related expenditures. Um, that's where we have the accommodations tax committee, um, the town and other sponsors of events and activities submit applications committee will review, the, review those, make recommendations to council, and then council will select um, which projects, which events uh, will receive funding from uh, our 65% uh, of the, um, the state A tax. So basically what that means on the revenue side, um, the 30% share um, would be reduced by 46.7%, 21,000. Um, the 65%, the tourism uh, related expenditure share um, would drop by 45.5, uh, also 46.7%. And then just what I said before about interest is gonna apply across the board. Uh, I've also recommended that we reduce the uh, interest revenue from that fund a, a little bit as well. So in total, that's gonna drop our state aid tax revenue by uh, $67,000. Um, if we maintain the same expenditures that we had budgeted this year, you will see right now, or under our existing budget, we were showing 143.4 in revenue and 172.5 in expenditures, which was a, a deficit of 29,100. Um, we do have money sitting in the ATAX fund balance. By law, we have to spend it within two years. So, you know, we were going to try to spend some of that down a little bit um, to the tune of 29,000. If we want to maintain what was budgeted as far as expenditures, we'd basically have to spend down $100,000, which is almost depleting the entire state aid tax fund balance. Um, now, we know there's a couple events and activities that um, are going to be canceled. Um, the town's fireworks event, um, we've already said, uh, has been canceled. The um, Bohicket Marina Merchants Association uh, has let us know they're not going to be having Kick It at Bohicket this year. So those are events and activities at the town funds. Um, and, um, you know, so the expenditure can go down for those uh, somewhat. Um, <clears throat> but when I get to the details, which we will in a second, um, we're still showing that we're going to spend down some of that fund balance. Majority of that is so we can maintain beach patrol funding uh, out of state A tax. And we'll talk about that in the details. But um, we, we have shown some reduction um, of 37,750, um, which will allow us to reduce what we otherwise would have to pull out of, um, out of the state A tax fund balance. 
but we're still going to have to pull a fairly sizable amount out of state aid tax fund balance to um, in order to meet those uh, expenditures. Um, basically, you said uh, you're required by statute to spend that money within a two year period. Yes. And then the obvious question is we've had state aid tax funds. So where are we on aging our fund balance? I'm trying to understand the amount that we're obliged to spend in 2020. <clears throat> My position were it ever to be challenged, and I don't know that it ever has been, um, but, but the state does have a committee. It's called TURC, the Tourism Expenditure Review Committee. They have oversight over ATAC um, expenditures. Um, I've always considered it a first in, first out approach. So, you know, when we spend money that we collect this year, the money we're spending first is the money that's been sitting there for two years. And everything that we collect now is available for two years. Um, I have never gone through a perk audit. <laughs> I know they're not very pleasant, um, but they do um, question expenditures from time to time. Uh, and they will look at, you know, if you're sitting on funds for an extended period of time. So, um, you know, we, we're always going to have a balance because we try to be conservative with our revenues uh, and hopefully we'll collect more than what we budget. Um, we just can't let that money sit there in perpetuity though. It does have to be spent. So do you know a number that we're obliged to spend this year by statute? <clears throat> um, I mean, we've been spending down some balance over the last couple of years. Um, if we assume whatever was sitting there at the end of 18 was the first money that was spent in 2019. Um, and then similarly, anything that was left in the balance 2019 is the first money we spent in 2020. I mean, it should always be two years out. Um, we can go back and double check that, but um, I mean, that, that would be uh, my opinion. My approach is first in, first out. Pretty much the only time they um question this lately was whenever we got some money from Charleston County that had been sent to them in error because that was one of those checks was in the I don't know how much it was now, but it was a bit. And um whenever they questioned it, um Benita told me just to write a letter and explain about getting the excess funds that we were inspecting and they weren't budgeted. Yeah, I think the point is that you're showing an amount that you're projecting would be the, call it the spend down from the fund balance. And I certainly applaud being conservative. On the other hand, I think it would be useful to know that we're not going to get ourselves caught by failing to spend money that we should have been spending. And, and we have a fund balance. So let's make sure we maximize taking advantage of what we're supposed to spend. Yeah, now based on what I have here, we would be spending more than we had budgeted this year. So we would be taking and, and spending more of that balance mm -hmm. than what we had budgeted. Uh, about twice as much as what we had budgeted. And based on where we were from the financials in December, when we did the budget, we thought we'd have about 89,000. Um, yeah, when we finished number. the financials, it was about 130,000. Yeah. So um, as we said, this is gonna go across the board for all of our balances. When you're doing the budget, you don't know, but after you complete the year, you have a better, a better understanding. So uh, we know there's more there than we expected. Um, and even spending more, we're still projecting to have more in the fund balance at the end of this year than we did when the budget was done. Yeah, I, you know, to me, I, I realize the 130,000 is not an audited number, but it just strikes me as here's the kind of magnitude of number that might get somebody's attention if they ever saw it. Why are you sitting on $100,000? And that, right. I think we want to make sure that doesn't, we don't perpetuate doing that. 
Yeah, um, certainly you don't want to get on the bad side of Turk. You don't want to have money sitting there that you're not spending. Um, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable uh, taking 58,000 out of it this year. Um, you know, that would leave us estimated about 71,000 next year. We don't know what the economy is going to look like next year either. We might have to go and take another 60,000 out next year. And then our fund balance may be down to you know, zero or very close to it. Um, the, uh, um, the biggest impact obviously is on beach control. So once the last few years, we have been spending down balance. And once that's gone, if we're going to maintain the same level of beach patrol, we're going to have to find another way to pay for it because the balance is not going to be there um, to, to pick up that cost. So most likely more of it's going to have to be shifted to uh, the general fund. Uh, under county ATAX, um, that was the one we've gotten word from the county. Um, we had budgeted to receive 50000 this year. Um, they have put all the municipalities on notice that they um, do not expect to send us anything this year. So that's 50000 uh, wiped out of the budget. Um, we are still showing $60 in interest, though, so it's not 100% loss. <laughs> Uh, and we had budgeted um, 60,000. Um, all of that was for beach patrol. And um, this is another one we do have, not as large as the other one, but we do have a balance also from what we received from the county. Um, usually that's just because if we budget something, we end up getting a little bit more, um, you know, it'll roll over from one year to the next. So um, <clears throat> we had budgeted to uh, spend down um, about half of our balance this year. Um, if we wanted to maintain what we had beach patrol at 60,000, we don't have enough balance to do it. So um, <clears throat> we'll talk about it in detail when we get to it, but um, I've recommended moving it out of, still using some county A tax because we do have some balance sitting there, um, but taking a, a sizable chunk of beach patrol and moving it to, uh, um, to general fund. Um, so with that one, we would see a, um, at the end of the year, um, fund balance of approximately $7,300. Uh, under alcohol tax, um, what that is, is when you have a, a restaurant or bar um, that has a um, alcohol permit, there's a tax that's generated by that, comes to the town, it's restricted how we, um, how we can use it. Um, we know there's been, I believe, two restaurants that have now closed at the marina, um, both of which had an alcohol permit. So <clears throat> we had budgeted 5,000. I've just recommended that we drop that down to 3,000. Um, no change to the expenditures and um, um, taking it out of our, um, the difference out of our fund balance, which uh, we're projecting now as of January 1st of this year had about 26,000 as opposed to what we thought when we did the budget, which was 14,000. Um, so, you know, we can absorb that 6,900, we'd be okay. Any questions about any of those? All right, so getting into the details of those specific um, funds. For state A tax, um, at this time, no change to the billfish tournament at 10,000. Um, Kick it at Bohicket, recommend zero, zeroing that out because they're not going to have the event this year. Um, Ellen Fleming, I, I have talked to the, the tournament chair. At this time, they're still proceeding. At last check, they're still proceeding um, that it will happen. Obviously, that's that's going to be subject to change. Um, so I've left that in at, at the approved amount, 12.5. Um, Beach Patrol, we had originally um, put that in at 40. When the budget was adopted, council set it at, I think, 50. Um, and then I've recommended just to offset some of the county A tax loss that we take a little bit more out of our state A tax balance um, to use that down a little bit more. Um, so that would go to 60,000 for Beach Patrol. Um, we've already spent the 10 for the CBB ad. 
Um, we've already signed the contract and committed for the Dalton Education Program, so no changes there. Uh, I did say the fireworks were canceled, um, but we had, before the pandemic started, um, put our deposit in um, for one half of the fireworks expense, $8,250. Uh, we have confirmed that they will, they can keep that and apply it towards next year's fireworks. And we would just have to pay a 15% um, fee to carry it over uh, into next year. In my opinion, a 15% fee is going to be better than uh, losing $8,250. So um, that's, what, that's the plan for that. Um, so that's the 65%. Um, the 30%, this is really just money in, money out. So whatever we collect goes to the CVB. Um, we had budgeted 45,000 in revenue and 45,000 expenditure. We're now showing 25,000 revenue or 24,000 revenue, 24,000 expenditure. So it's basically whatever comes in goes out. If we collect more, we give them more. If we collect less, we give them less. Um, but uh, we estimate that's going to be at about 24,000 this year. Um, so that'll be the new recommended expenditures for state A tax. For county A tax, we said um, counties cut 50,000. Um, I've recommended that we drop that from 60,000. Originally, we were using 50,000 in revenue plus 10 from the balance. Um, now it's using 15 from balance and basically no revenue. Um, and the 40, 5,000 that's being cut out of county A tax. Part of that's going to state A tax to be used out of the state A tax balance, and part of it's going to the general fund. <clears throat> so I am not recommending any change to the days, hours, personnel, or coverage to beach patrol um, at this time. Just changing how we how we fund it. And capital expenditures didn't make any recommended changes there. Any questions about restricted funds, state, county, A tax, or alcohol tax? All right. Here are none. We will jump ahead to the um, designated funds. Um, if you recall, when council adopted the budget for 2020, um, basically on paper, we had consolidated all of our uh, unrestricted funds back into the general fund. And then when the budget was adopted again on paper, we basically reapportioned out certain funds to be designated for specific purposes. Now, some of them we budgeted money to be used this year. Others we didn't, it's just sitting there in reserves. Um, so the first one, we had the emergency fund. Um, that fund had um, set aside $2 million. We didn't budget any expenditures out of the emergency fund. Um, they can tell you we have actually spent some dollars out of the emergency fund because there's been some uh, equipment, some things that we've had to do to get our um, building ready to be reopened to the public. We've had the, um, the temporary LED sign up on the street. Those are the type of things that we've, um, we actually have paid for out of emergency. If you wanted to, we can throw in an expenditure on there, but Typically, we don't budget emergency expenditures just as they come in. We use the um, whatever sitting there in the fund to uh, to pay for those. Um, <clears throat> so I haven't shown any changes here, but full disclosure, we are spending a little bit uh, out of the emergency fund, which will come out of that $2 million balance. Um, for the road and drainage fund, um, we were um, Council put 500,000 into that road and drainage fund. Um, that's obviously for road and drainage projects. Um, we had budgeted 200,000 um, this year, uh, basically uh, um, to do some drainage projects. Um, I've recommended that we delay or cut one of them and then add in the 70,000 that we've done for the repairs on the pathway. Um, earlier this year, um, basically just reflecting that that money's already been spent. Um, so, but it would be a net reduction uh, in the capital expenditures out of that fund by uh, $30,000. Um, 
which would leave us at the end of the year with an estimated 330,000 that'll still be sitting in the road and drainage fund for future road and drainage projects. <clears throat> um, and then council, as we close out one year, um, when we have a surplus, any given year council would have the ability to take portions of that surplus and move it into any of these funds. Uh, if the need arises, you also have the ability to take money out of these funds and move it to general fund or somewhere else or move it between funds uh, if you so choose. Um, these are not restricted in any way, shape or form. It's, you know, whatever action council takes, you know, you, you can do with these funds. Um, moving down to town facilities, this was primarily for um, capital projects at our town hall uh, complex. If you recall, we had budgeted to um, do a um, construction of a new garage slash storage facility. Um, I'm just going to recommend that we delay that project for now uh, and take that expenditure um, out. So the money would just stay um, in the reserves and would roll over uh, and be available for future years. <coughs> and the last one, we weren't budgeting to buy any vehicles this year, so no, no impact on the um, expenditure side. So looking quickly at the details for each of those funds. Uh, emergency fund, no expenditure, so no impact there. Um, other than what we're actually spending for some of these emergency expenses that we've had related to the pandemic. Uh, the way 2020 is going, I guess we're going to have a hurricane this year. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, but uh, if we were to have a hurricane or other natural disaster, this money's there to help offset some of the cleanup and uh, recovery expenses related to that. Uh, of course, we also have a line of credit available if it's a major, uh, major storm or major event, but that's what this money is sitting there for. So we don't necessarily go and budget it, but if the need arises, we just go and tap into it and use it. Yeah, I'll just say that uh, for, I guess, every instance, I think we've experienced Going back to what we had this uh, the first the first time we had a hurricane out here since I've been on council, we took the funds that we used for getting the storm shutters or storm panels applied to town hall. We took money from the emergency fund for that, and. Uh, when we paid the landscape contractor for debris cleanup, we were charging that against the emergency fund. And as you know, in every instance, we have made application for the so-called uh, public assistance from FEMA. And as that money is received, it goes back into the emergency fund. So without actually, in these years, we have been continuing to make uh, contributions to the emergency fund to build up the fund balance. But just so you know, we money that we spent out of the emergency fund has been replenished to some extent by our receipts from FEMA and the state. So our fund balance, once we got in the neighborhood of something over a million and three quarters, I think um, we were actually using the emergency fund as we should have been for these things and then re replenishing with what we received from FEMA. So that's what's happening. And we're, we're now, we're, we're not making, we did not plan to make another contribution to the emergency fund for this year, so we were at two million and we're staying at two million. Yeah, and what, what you can do, what we kind of anticipated was once the audit was complete and we had an exact number of where we finished um, 2019, and we say, okay, there's $2 million sitting in the general fund fund balance. You could at that time, if council so chooses, say, okay, well, we're gonna take 
hundred thousand and put it into emergency. And we're going to put this over here. There's a certain amount you want to keep, minimum amount in your general fund fund balance, just for cash flow and you know, emergency type purposes. But um, you know what we have in there now is close to two years general fund uh, operating expenditures. So um, <clears throat> obviously we generated a lot more revenue last year and spent less than what we expected. So the fund balance, we think the general fund fund balance is probably gonna be somewhere in the two to one uh, million range once the audit's completed. And historically council in the past had taken money out once the year was, uh, once the year was finished and moved it to emergency fund or other funds and certainly do the same thing um, this year, I would just wait to do it until after the audit was completed. <laughs> that, that's a good point about FEMA. I, I failed to mention that. Um, that is how the majority of those funds have been replenished uh, over time, have been through uh, FEMA and I guess state reimbursements were, were provided. Well, it's, it's up to the legislature to approve the funding for their share. And, uh, you know, they've done it in the past, but for Dorian, they have, I have not learned that they have approved that allocation. So at this point, we don't know if we're going to get that 25% from Dorian. All right. Um, moving ahead to the road and drainage fund expenditures. Uh, what we had in the budget originally was uh, 100000 for design engineering and permitting to raise the elevation of Seabrook Island Road to an elevation to be determined, and 100000 to um, complete the drainage improvements here at Town Hall. Um, I'm going to jump ahead into the facilities fund. The drainage improvements were primarily to get us a dry spot in the rear of the property where we can build the garage. If we're gonna delay the garage, then that's not as high of a priority. Um, we still can do the project, the money's there to do it if you so choose. Um, but uh, I would recommend that we just push it off until sometime next year. Um, <clears throat> we can, I, I've left the funding in for the design and engineering for the road elevation project. That's something that might get spent, it might not. Um, I think there's still some additional review and conversation that has to be done before we finalize that commitment. Um, I know Barry uh, has been spending quite a bit of time on that, um, looking at different options and recommendations for the roadway. Uh, and of course, we've been working with um, uh, ESP associates um, with some additional information as well. So I've recommended leaving that in there, <clears throat> cutting the actual drainage improvements here at Town Hall, um, I should say delaying. Um, <clears throat> and then we did, council did approve um, using road and drainage funds earlier this year for the emergency repairs to the um, bike path, which cost us about $70,000, uh, including the resurfacing and the root pruning. Um, so I said, since we've already spent it, let's just reflect it in the budget. So that's the additional 70,000 that I've added. Uh, and then, of course, jumping down to facilities, as I've already said, um, removing or delaying um, construction for a new garage um, here at the town hall property. <clears throat> and then lastly, under vehicle replacement fund, um, we didn't uh, budget purchase of any new vehicles this year. Um, we just purchased ours in the last year or so, so we're good for a while. Um, <clears throat> So those are my recommendations. Um, I will allow you to marinate on those for a little while. Um, I, I do think we should go in and do a budget amendment. Um, what that budget amendment looks like ultimately will be up to you. You have my recommendations, but we can make whatever changes you would like to make. Um, but. Uh, if you want to proceed as recommended, we can have a draft budget amendment ordinance ready for you uh, for the first reading at the June council meeting. Um, if you want to have another workshop, more discussion, uh, you know, whatever you want to do, we're here to help. Um, but uh, at that point, 
this is my best guess of where I think um, the impact will be and recommendations to uh, uh, modify our budget accordingly. Um, at that point, I hand that to you to do whatever you'd like to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, my preference would be that we would have it on the agenda for the June meeting. But I'm open if you, you know, you, you have had this now for a few days, I guess, to consider. So you don't have to decide that today. I think it would be worth your time to go back and take a look at what Joe has prepared. And then as questions occur to you, I would suggest that you pose those to Joe and copy the rest of the council so that we all get the benefit of things that may not have occurred to us, but are certain, certainly worthy of consideration. So with that, Joe, is there anything else that you uh, see a need to take up? Uh, no, probably the only other thing, and I, I said this early on, um, but you know, if you want to add some projects back in, we will be taking more out of the balance, which, I mean, we have sizable balance, so that's not the end of the world. Um, if we're going to do that, I wouldn't have concern about one-time expenditures. So if it's not a recurring expenditure, um, I would certainly not recommend funding recurring expenditures uh, out of our balance. But if it's a one-time, you know, if you're really, you know, wanting to do the new carpet or the new signage or whatever, and we put that in, take it out of the balance. It's not the end of the world. Um, you know, like I said, we have a, a sizable balance. Um, I would just keep in the back of your mind, we're gonna see the impact next year too. So Joe, I have a couple questions. Here. Sure. One from the mayor. So when you talk about the video equipment and the mayor asked, you know, if that can be done separately or whatever, when when you do that to the chamber here, is it going to in, involve tearing up the carpet for wiring? Um, so, like, if you went forward sure. with the carpet and then came back and did the video, are we tearing up carpet? Uh, it shouldn't. Um, we would um, have to bring the when we did the stuff in the um, conference room. Mm -hmm. We had um, the contractor who was doing all the wiring and installing the outlets and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the, the general contractor. And then we had the um, audio video contractor who was coming in with the equipment and the setup and everything. Um, <clears throat> when we did the recording system in here, um, the audio contractor came in and set that system up, but the, um, um, the general contractor did the electric did the wiring through the floor and the walls and everything. So I, my assumption is we would do it the same way if we did that. Um, I, when they did the wiring and the electric for um, the audio, um, everything was just done under the building and then through the floor. So there was just a small, small okay. cut where they put a new outlet on the floor and um, ran the wiring. So I assume we would be able to do uh, wiring for video the same way. Okay. So then my question for the mayor is this kind of procedural, since we're, this is an official meeting. If we wanted to ask Joe and Faye to step out of the room, do we have to have a motion to go into executive session? If I had a question to ask the rest of council? Uh, I don't think we can have an executive session unless we satisfy the ordinance, the requirements of our ordinance for having an executive session, which would mean we would have to be addressing a legal matter or an employment matter. And I think there was one other category personnel, legal advice, um, so pending was, contractual I, matters. I mean, can we ask you to step out of the room for five minutes without going into executive session? You can, but we have to keep the audio and the video going. Well, that's, I don't have any problem with that. Yeah, we can leave. Then we can watch the video on YouTube later. I mean, okay. <laughs>
Joe, will you step back? Because I can't wait to hear what this is going to be. No, and I don't want to embarrass you. But there are a couple small bonuses in here for staff. I think there should be a significant one in here for Joe because of what he has done the last three or four months. I mean, just doing the budget stuff. This is work you didn't expect to have to do on the budget. You were incredible on all our PISs and keeping staff informed and being here. So I just wanted to say to council, we need to add that back in from the contingency fund or something. That I do want to embarrass you by sitting here. <laughs> But I, I'm, happy to, on, I'm <laughs> happy to go on record <laughs> saying that for all of the time here. Thank you, Terry. Don't worry, Jill will get over it. We'll, I just want to make sure that we'll, that is. We'll have a special thing. negotiation with Jill about how to reward him for his good deeds. Okay. Well, it's on record. I just wanted to say that. Many a cost. I, I appreciate that. I don't need any reward. You saying thanks to me is good enough. <laughs> All right. So that was the big mystery. Okay. Grant is not a mystery anymore. <laughs> so, having reviewed the proposed revised budget and having asked that all members of council give this their attention and convey their questions to Joe and copy everyone else, as I said, I am now prepared to entertain a motion to adjourn this Can I meeting. Ask one question? Yeah. Before we sure. um, can we talk about we're meeting again for ways and means? Can we can we discuss this at the ways and means meeting? Well, ordinarily what we would do at ways and means was would be to address action items for the council meeting. So if we are at a point by the ways and means meeting that we know we'll want to undertake approval of revised budget at the council meeting. That can be something that we talk about at the ways and means meeting. To put on the budget, on the, on the, I'm sorry, on the agenda for the council meeting. Wouldn't that be, I mean, to me, it's like just a no brainer that we would be putting this on the agenda. Or are we waiting for. I, 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 I'm not, I would prefer not to pin anyone down that this will be a by ordinance at the next council meeting i want everyone to have an opportunity to have their questions asked and answered before we decide what it is that we're going to have in the ordinance by which we would adopt a revised budget we can't discuss i'm having trouble understanding that because we only get together well, we get together a lot, it appears, but yeah. when we get together, it just seems that the next time we meet, why, why would, on two, next Tuesday, why wouldn't we discuss this? Like you would like a Q&A on the budget, on yeah. the agenda, on ways and means committee, yeah. just yes. a Q&A. Yeah. Well, we're good. Okay. Yeah. 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 All I'm trying to do is not put the entire body of council in a box. <laughs> To, okay, that's what I want. I would to like to adopt today. what we've seen today by ordinance. Okay. Yeah. That's we're we're not saying that. We're saying that in order to adopt a revised budget, that has to be done by ordinance, and that would require a council meeting. And what we probably should do is make sure that we all have an opportunity to make our suggestions or changes to the revised budget. And if any. Okay, and so if we if we write show about our thoughts, um, we can have a Q and A at next Tuesday's meeting. Okay, and absolutely. Okay, this was I think the notion was that Joe wanted to get this started, so this is essentially a special meeting of council for the express purpose of having an opportunity to review. A revised proposed budget, proposed revised budget. And we reviewed it. Okay. It wasn't as painful as I thought it was going to be. Okay. So, yes, we can certainly discuss this at the Ways and Means meeting.
discuss any of your questions about this proposed design. Okay. Yeah, that's that's typically how we handle when we have a pending ordinance. Okay. Um, you know, usually I put it under my report and say, here's the pending ordinances for the next um, the next council meeting, and you would have a copy and. It, it has happened in the past where council looks at it and before the meeting, you know, if there's a consensus that you want it to read a certain way or add something or take something out, um, you know, you can ask for it and we just modify it and then that'll be the version that comes before you at the, okay. at the council meeting. At the council meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Anything else? Barry, anything? Thank you. Well, one other thing, I'm going to adjourn. So, second. Second. All in favor, please signify your approval to adjourn this meeting by saying aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Oh, we, uh, <laughs>